we want to evaluate the integral or determine the antiderivative. Looking at the integrand, notice how the denominator is degree two and the numerator is degree one and therefore u substitution would be a good strategy to try in order to find the antiderivative. So if we let u equal the denominator of x squared plus two x plus 10, differential u, which is equal to u prime times dx, would be equal to the quantity two x plus two times dx. Looking at our numerator, notice how we don't have a factor of two x plus two, we have a factor of eight x plus 12. But notice how if we did factor out the greatest common factor of four, the first term would be two x, which would match this factor here. So let's go ahead and factor out four from the numerator. So we can write this as the integral of, again we'll factor out the four, which leaves us with two x. Now notice to perform this u substitution though, the numerator has to contain a factor of two x plus two. If we factor out a four, we'd be left with a plus three here. Let's go ahead and put plus two. Notice how if we distribute, we'd have plus eight, but we really have plus 12. So to make up the difference, we can add four here. Notice how we still have eight x plus eight plus four, which does give us eight x plus 12. And we'll go ahead and leave the denominator the same for right now. We have x squared plus two x plus 10. And now because we have a sum here, we can write this as two separate integrals where we'll be able to perform u substitution to evaluate the first integral and then we'll work on evaluating the second integral. So we'd have the integral of four times the quantity two x plus two divided by x squared plus two x plus 10. And then we have plus the integral of four divided by the quantity x squared plus two x plus 10. So now we know we can perform u substitution to evaluate this integral, but to evaluate the second integral, we'll have to change the form of the denominator so it's in the form of a squared plus u squared, where a is a constant and u is a function of x, where the antiderivative will involve arctangent. So let's rewrite this, group the x terms together, and then we'll complete the square on x squared plus two x. So let's go ahead and first factor out the four from our first integral. So we have four times the integral of the quantity two x plus two, divided by the quantity x squared plus two x plus 10. Let's also factor out this four. So we have plus four times the integral of one, divided by, now we'll group the x terms together. So we'll have the quantity x squared plus two x plus some constant to complete the square, and then we still have plus 10. And then whenever we add here, we'll have to subtract to maintain equality. So now remember to complete the square on a trinomial where the leading coefficient is one, we take half the coefficient of x and square it. Well, half of two is one and one squared is one. So we'll add one here. And if we add one here, we'll have to subtract one here. Now notice if we factor this trinomial, we'd have two binomial factors, where we'd have x and x. The factors of one that add to two are one and one, so we have plus one, plus one. And here, 10 minus one is nine, so we have plus nine. Now notice the denominator can be written in the form of x plus one squared, plus nine's a perfect square, which we can write as three squared. So looking at our integral formula, notice how a would be three and u would be x plus one. So let's go ahead and write this again as four times the integral of two x plus two divided by the quantity x squared plus two x plus 10 and then plus four times the integral of one divided by, just to make it fit this form better, let's write the nine or three squared first and then we'll write the quantity x plus one squared. Now let's go ahead and finish this on the next slide. So we already know for the first integral, u is equal to x squared plus two x plus 10, and therefore differential u equals two x plus two dx. And then for the second integral, notice how a would be equal to three, 
and u would be equal to the quantity x plus one. So notice if u is equal to the quantity x plus one, differential u equals differential x, and therefore no u substitution is required. So looking at this first integral, if we wrote this in terms of u, we'd have four times integral of the denominator of x squared plus two x plus 10 is equal to u, and the quantity two x plus two dx is equal to differential u. So this simplifies nicely to just one over u to u, and therefore the antiderivative would be four times natural log absolute value u, where u is equal to x squared plus two x plus 10, And then for the second antiderivative, we'd have plus four times one over a, which would be one over three or one third arctangent of u divided by a, which would be the quantity x plus one divided by three, and then of course plus c, the constant of integration. So the last step would be to rewrite this as four thirds arctangent. And it's also true that x squared plus two x plus 10 is non-negative, so we could drop the absolute value here. We can write this as four times natural log of the quantity x squared plus two x plus 10 plus four thirds times arctangent of the quantity x plus one divided by three plus c. So this would be the antiderivative or the family of functions that have a derivative of the quantity eight x plus 12 divided by the quantity x squared plus two x plus 10. I hope you found this helpful.